you're here today, and we're grateful that you are, as part of the Melting Pot Project, which is sponsored in part by the State of Florida Division of Cultural Affairs. And it's an opportunity for Jacksonville to learn more about its citizens and uh, what, what our city really looks like, where our citizens came from, pieces of their story. So I'm grateful that you're willing to be here today. And today I welcome TK Sharma and Raul Sharma. Did I pronounce your names correctly? So. You got his right. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. you got his pretty good. Let's, would you so my first name is uh, Rahul. My parents, uh, they were victim of partition of India in 1947. And uh, they were refugees in New Delhi. And uh, they started their life again. And uh, that's where I was born in Delhi. So they fled to New Delhi from where? From West Punjab. Okay, Punjab. Okay. Yes. And to New Delhi, and that was about 1947. 47. Yes. And you were one of a number of children in the family? Yes, I am the oldest. I have two more siblings my younger brother and my sister. And they're still in, live in New Delhi. And when they fled to New Delhi, what did they do to survive? How did they make a living? Well, uh, my dad was fortunate to join the Indian Air Force, and uh, he was accepted in the Air Force. So. And my grandfather was transferred to a certain part of India, and they did not hear from him for almost five months. And uh, they gave up their hopes, whether he's alive or not. But fortunately, my grandfather and his younger brother, together they were going to the city where he was transferred to and uh, met with an accident. And he was in, my grandfather was in hospital, I don't know for how long, when he gained consciousness. He found out that his younger brother didn't make it. And uh, so, uh, then he got transferred back to Delhi, and that's where he retired and settled in the village where I was born at. So then your your father would live out, your grandfather yes. would live out his life there in New Delhi near the rest of the family. Yes. We and, all, like Indian people back then, believed in combined family. That house still exists. My mom, who's 90 years old now, she lives there. My dad passed away about six years ago. And I visit her every year. In the same house, I was not born in a hospital. I was born upstairs in a room. I was delivered by a midwife. And uh, me and my brother both. And that brings a lot of memories back. When I look at the walls, several walls are still the same. And I go and look around, that brings a lot of memories back to me. Do you still have extended family in the house with your mother year round? Uh, my mom lives by herself. And uh, my sister and my brother, they go and visit her periodically, once a week or so. But she's very independent. Lady. It's impressive. And, uh, what was life like growing up in New Delhi? Because that is that's where you were born, and that and you went to school. And what was your school experience like? I assume you did. Like we, I belong to a middle class family, so uh, I did not get opportunity to go to uh, private schools. Like that. So I. Uh, Studied in government schools, what they call it there. And uh, after Air Force, my father joined the Civil Aviation Department. He used to get transferred to different cities. And we used to go with him, so uh, I've been to school in Delhi, I've been to school in Calcutta, I've been to school in Assam. And so uh, I did not go to school in just one city, you know. 
uh, Ex Exeter High School, 9th, 10th, and 11th, I was in three different states. And uh, so that was about my schooling, basically. As, as a middle class family, yes, did you uh, have help in your house in, in India? Would that be typical of a middle class family? Uh, when I was growing up, uh, yes, maid servant used to come to uh, do the dishes and clean a little bit, but not full time or anything. So after high school, I assume you call it high school or 12th grade, I heard you refer to yes. 10th, 11th, 12th. Did you go on to any additional schooling? Did you continue? Uh, yes, I did my uh, undergrad from Delhi University. And uh, at the same time, I was doing the tech school as well. So I was going to uh, tech school to do uh, air conditioning refrigeration. Now, just so I keep everything straight, um, and I'm going to have you say your name one more time. Ronald. 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 Oh, I'm usually write this down. The faster you say it, the better off you are. Okay. <laughs> so. You were born where? Jacksonville. And ja you were actually born here. I did not know that about you. So um, we're going to get back. You're probably because we're going to find out how you eventually made your way to the states and and specifically to Jacksonville. So I'll let you tell more of your story, and we'll bring your son in eventually to this. <laughs> actually, I got married in 1980, and my wife was already here before marriage and uh, after we got married in Delhi she sponsored me to come to the United States and uh, I had to go to American Embassy for interview and all that and that's how I got my immigration through my spouse. So your spouse already had her American citizenship was she at was she but, born here? In but she was not born. She was here. not born here. No. And she's Indian, I think. She is from yeah. India, yes. Okay, she is. Yes. And uh, she was sponsored by her sister, who is a registered nurse in New Jersey. Was that's it how, in a, mm -hmm. That's how she came here. And uh, at that time, you don't have to have United States citizenship to sponsor your spouse. If you're a legally immigrant to this country, but a green card, you can do that. And that's what she had at the time. Was she a nurse as well? No, she was no, not a nurse. Not a nurse. No. And uh, was it an arranged marriage? It was. And so her parents and your parents? Uh, they got together, yes. And uh, it just so happened at that time, the trend was <laughs> Like nowadays, the wedding dot com or whatnot, you know, <laughs> and same way they used to. Uh, like Indian parents, Indian origin parents lived in the United States, were looking for a spouse for their uh, daughter or son from India. They would advertise in the newspaper, matrimonial. Oh, oh, they, oh, so this is actual through advertising. They don't necessarily have known her parents for years right. and years. No, we did not know each actually. other's parents at all before uh, this process started. And were uh, either or both of you religious? And if so, were you the same religion? Uh, we are from same religion, same caste. We both are Brahmins. Both Brahmins. They okay. used to, uh, back then, make sure, you know, they preferred that both of us are from the same caste. Now the things are changing a little bit. And uh, so we were from the same caste, Brahmin caste. And uh, so she came to India, visited India. Before, prior to that, she sent a photograph and I sent my photograph. Oh, okay. And that was the initial state. And uh, then we saw each other, and, uh, of course, with the parents' willingness, yeah, we got engaged and got married. And you've been married since 1980? Yes, ma'am. 
So this, uh, so the Match.com of the day certainly worked, and uh, oh well, it <laughs> sure did. <laughs> <laughs> and and just to define your religion for the people listening to this, your religion is or was. I was, I was born in a Hindu Brahmin family. Okay. And uh, my mom is a you're a vegetarian till this day. She won't even eat eggs. Whenever we visit, and we, me, my dad, my brother, we are not. And uh, we will eat our thing. And you, were you a uh, vegetarian growing up because uh, your mother was. Most part of it, most. yes. Because non veg was not cooked in our house. When did you discover meat? It's meats and pro, you know, and. and Things uh, that were well, we were not that much health conscious okay. while growing up, and the trend was the more you, the better off you are. The more better you are, the better you are. But now it's totally opposite to that. Are there certain meats you will not eat, or do you eat meat? I take well, it. I, mm -hmm. I have no restrictions. You no know, restrictions. So, yeah, I. Try not to eat, to pay for anything, and uh, chicken and fish or nothing like that. Did you continue to practice the Hindu faith, you and your Yes, yes I, I sure do. believe in it because the reason behind the family you're born in has got so much impact on you. And it doesn't matter what, when you grow up, you decide to do, but still those teachings are going to stay with you. So, yes, I do believe, in, uh, but I'm not a fanatic or anything. And, uh, Did your mother ever work out of the home? or was no, she, she never did. Connected? She was always a housewife all her life. Would that have been atypical of a Brahmin to have the woman work out of the home necessarily? Back uh, then, anyway. Back then, yes. Okay. Uh, majority of the female ladies of the house will look after the house and men will work. Uh, what is your fondest memory of childhood uh, I, I, or your teenage years, any, any time growing up? Growing up, I was fortunate, me and my brother, we both were fortunate that uh, both of our grandparents were alive. And uh, growing up with them, in our village house. Uh, that was the best part of my life. My grandma had three cows. She would get up early in the morning, milk the cows. And we were like a cubs, you know. We didn't care about our parents, but grandma, if she's there, we are with her all day long. And, uh, I think that was the best part, so far my grandparents were around. It's a nice memory to have, and uh, we'll talk about one more thing before we move on. Uh, culturally, uh, your activities, what your family did for fun, what you maybe did separate your family for fun, and also uh, your culinary uh, uh, delights, I mean, what, what you typically ate. Uh, and there and what you eat now, typically? Uh, so for food is concerned, everything is available here. And even here, very seldom, we will cook meat in the house. And uh, basically, vegetarian food. My wife being a vegetarian, she's a vegetarian, so, so you want, uh, yes, okay. yes. Okay. And, uh, if we want to eat non veg, we have to go outside. Okay. Go to a restaurant or something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, both my boys were not vegetarians growing up, and she did not stop that either. You know, whatever they feel like, you know. and, uh, the my younger son, who was a naval officer in the United States Navy, he became vegetarian about three years ago. So it's not a part of it. 
part of religion or anything. Uh, he thinks that's good for his health. He's a marathon runner. And, uh, he thinks that helps him likewise. So, uh, so I'd like to turn to Ralph. I, I got your, I ruined your name. That that's okay. So I'm going to have you say one more time. I'll see if I can. You know, the best way, Emily, okay. to remember it, I, I tell a lot of uh, people this. So there was a Hall of Fame ice hockey player in this country that played for the Detroit Red Wings. And his name was Bobby Hull, H-U-L-L, Bobby Hull. So I remind people that 99% of this country can pronounce Bobby Hull. And they, can, <laughs> they can also pronounce Rahul. Oh, very nice. So that's, I think, a way that I can try to help people remember the name. You did a good job, by the way, I thought. You great. did. Were great. <laughs> and we're going to come back to your, your father. TK will come back. He, he won't admit it, but he likes being in the spotlight and... Uh, you know, talking like this. So this is good for him. It's a good break from, he works seven days a week. So. First, first time in have, my life I'm in front of camera. Like, you know, you are, <laughs> you are indeed a natural. And we're going to come back to you and find out what you do, because I know you're highly entrepreneurial. And uh, uh, and we're interviewing you on the weekend because you, you work a lot. And, and I know, well, well, go ahead. Go ahead and talk about your work. And then we'll... Well, I uh, eat myself up a bite. <laughs> and of course, you know, extra work helps you financially as well. And, uh, my full-time job, I'm employed with Baptist Medical Center and their plant facilities. I'm an HVAC tech there. And at the same time, I have my own maintenance company as well, in air conditioning refrigeration. I do a lot of work there. So uh, I leave every morning, 5 o'clock, get there, and uh, leave there at 3.30. And somebody is waiting for me somewhere. And somebody has air conditioning problems or cooler problems. So uh, my day ends at about 8, 9 o'clock at night. Then you start and, all over again. Oh, my. And I've been doing this for a long time. But then I've got used to it. But I enjoy it. Well, I certainly know that uh, that at least one, if not both, of your sons you, you sent to private school here in Jacksonville. So we know how you got to Jacksonville now. Um, then you and your wife had two sons, am I correct? Yes. And this is just horrible. Yes. Oh my well gosh! Done. I'm, I'm afraid to say it again. Well done. Thank you. So nonetheless, <laughs> you you were born here in Jacksonville. What year were you born? 1984. 1984. And talk a little bit about your life. Um, you you know had parents and their their life began in another country. They had migrated here. And then you had lots of friends here, no doubt. Uh, and what was life like for you? Did you feel like you had a different cultural background or you felt comfortable blending right in and becoming very Americanized where your parents horrified by this or embraced it? Uh, talk about your, your life. Yeah, I think they eventually embraced the uh, American <laughs> lifestyle. Uh, no question about that. Uh, I was very quiet as a kid uh, because I was paying so much attention to our home and the way that we did things and the contrast to my friends' houses and, and going to school and interacting with different types of people that didn't have the same type of name as me or maybe looked different than me. Uh, I considered myself uh, a white kid in a private school growing up because there were no other Indian students in my class. And so I think it's human instinct where you become a product of your surroundings. You, you, um, you blend in. And so uh, I was very proud and I still am very proud of my parents uh, because I try to put myself in their shoes. I can only imagine what it's like to make a conscientious decision to leave your own home country and try to start life all over again. I don't know what that's like, and, and many of us don't, uh, but very appreciative that 
they had the courage, like many other immigrants that come to the U.S. that want to start a new life. Uh, but uh, I'm also going to speak on behalf of my brother. We are extremely blessed because our our parents worked extremely hard to provide us a, a wonderful home, a safe home, uh, while still instilling uh, cultural aspects and traits into our life and not forgetting where our family originates from, uh, but to also embrace the U.S. And uh, I thought they did a great job of that. So that's, um, you know, some of my uh, perspective, you know, growing up quiet because I noticed that there was a contrasting style from the way we were in our home to other homes that we would go and visit. Can you can you mention a few of those contrasts? Yeah, so I mean, I, I can remember uh, being invited one time to a friend's house and he's a, I'm still friends with him today, uh, where we walked through the main door of the house, the main entrance of the house, and I immediately start taking my shoes off. And, and he goes, what are you doing? He's already up at the top of the staircase waiting for me to come up and we can start playing uh, different games and whatnot. And I said, no, I need to take my shoes off because we, my mom and dad make me take my shoes off in our house immediately. You know, uh, you know some, that's just a simple example. Um, but just, you know, we didn't have pets growing up. You know, no cats and dogs and not, nothing like that. My mom actually used to joke and say that I've got two pets already, you know, referencing my brother and I. Um, you know, so I, we were very basic, very simple people. Um, you know, went to school, participated in extracurricular activities so we kept occupied. Our parents always believed in, you know, doing and participating in activities and, uh, and being respectful of others because everybody's different. Uh, you know, you probably heard my father talk about he attended public schooling in India. Granted, there were many different public schools he had to attend. Their family moved a lot in a short period of time when he was in high school. Uh, we were fortunate to attend private schools, um, both my brother and I. And our parents valued education. They believed that um, in order to be a responsible person, to contribute to society, uh, and education sets the foundation for your life. And so I know many families also echo that same sentiment, not just mine, but that is a fundamental belief that both my parents had uh, for, for my brother and I to have a private school education and an education altogether. Um, are there any um, the, the cultural um, characteristics of an Indian household or your Indian household growing up that, that you've maintained uh, in your life? Uh -oh. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, it's funny, my, my father is, is a big fan of um, Indian entertainment. Um, and I'm talking old classical entertainment, uh, song, film, dance, uh, in addition to culinary tastes and, and preferences, uh, certainly has uh, had an effect, a positive influence on me that I try to uh, still maintain to this day. I, I find myself um, <laughs> singing in the living room and, and, and the two boys, Andrew and Patrick, have no clue what I'm saying. And they'll try to echo the, the rhythm or the tune of the song. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that's an example of where uh, I'm, very much uh, accepting of uh, Indian song and dance. I've actually perform I actually performed uh, an Indian song and dance routine uh, in the second grade at Mandarin High School uh, with other Indian children as part of an annual function that is still held in town. And then also in college, I, I sang in front of a an auditorium just to try to make my dad proud that I still haven't lost all my heritage. <laughs> so is this typical of, of, of music we would hear today, uh, that general American audiences would hear today? Or is it music maybe we're not being exposed to? Some of the movies you can catch today yeah, that are Indian. Certainly. Uh, you're starting to have, uh, certainly with uh, social media and the way communication travels so fast today, uh, America uh, is uh, well aware of the cultural rich tradition of Indian cinema, which is the largest uh, movie industry in the world. Uh, 
producing well over 900 films a year. Um, and that's just an estimate. Uh, and, and many different languages and dialects that a lot of uh, Western society has adopted in some of their cinematic features as well. Uh, yes, I would say that the common uh, population is aware. Uh, what started out originally as Indian classical song and dance has even evolved in India as well into more modern style presentation. But yeah, to answer your question, I, I do try to uh, instill uh, some of the uh, culture into my current family. I'm engaged, as I talked to you about, um, uh, to an American uh, uh, who has two children as well. Uh, so, you, you know, you talk about combining families. <laughs> you know, uh, we, uh, we try to still hold on to some of those aspects of the Indian culture. Now, at your wedding, Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I take it your wedding was not arranged, correct? <laughs> no, it better not have been. Although he tried to, he tried to arrange it at one point. He, he, you did. Well, he hints at it every year that he makes annual trips to India, and if you ever need me to look for somebody, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> but you would... finally, I realized after uh, living in this country for so long, and things have changed there as well. So uh, whatever their choices, you know, it's a generation gap. The response of a loving father. Yes. He's been very supportive, um, but no, it was not arranged. I was very fortunate to be able to have uh, the opportunity to meet people and um, develop a respect and an appreciation. And, uh, and so I'm excited that I'll be able to experience that this year uh, uh, with my fiance. As you mentioned, we're, we're scheduled to, to marry and wed this fall. Uh, I've been to uh, at least one Indian wedding. I, I, I mean, they're so memorable, it would be uh, difficult to ever forget. And I know at that wedding, and maybe this is tradition, um, the Indian relatives and friends, the children put usually put on a performance at the wedding. Am I correct? That is right. And, yeah. and uh, the performance oftentimes might be um, a, a presentation of the young couple's life together or wh whatever they choose to do and they sing and they dance to celebrate the marriage. Will this happen at yours or uh, not the family extension here? What do you know? I, I think the appropriate word to uh, describe how the wedding will be executed uh, will be a fusion. Uh, the wedding will take place in a Catholic church setting followed by a reception at a private non-denominational school uh, with multiple catering options for both the American population and the Indian population. Um, and so I, I think you're going to have a, a pretty good balance so everyone feels a sense of belonging. <laughs> so will you have a little Indian music to dance? I think by? we will. I think, okay. I think my dad is responsible for hiring an Indian, Indian uh, yes. DJ okay. uh, that he, he oh, knows Indian somebody. Wedding, music, <laughs> Indian music is going to be there. Yeah. And especially if uh, you, know, you are from Punjab, where I'm from. And uh, our folk dances have taken over. Yeah, I mean, you know, accepted by different part of India and the movies that became so popular. And so uh, that is definitely going to be good. Well, it's an exciting time for your family. Is there any um, possibility that your mother in her 90s now will be able to travel over? I don't think so. Uh, she would love to be here, but uh, with her age, in the health conditions, I don't think so she will be able to make it. But uh, I always look forward to see both of them, Rahul and his wife. Well, Rahul, talk about that. How often do you get to India? Uh, has your fiance had a chance to to go to India? And tell me your plans in that regard to to remain in touch with. Uh, your, your, your family's home country. Certainly. Uh, I've attended and visited India twice. Um, the last time was in 1997. I was only 13 years of age. Uh, and then prior to that, just a year old in 85. Uh, my fiance has never visited India. 
my father has certainly encouraged us recently that uh, we need to make an effort uh, to, to go and um, build fellowship with our uh, extended family uh, on his side, which is very important to my father. Um, in fact, the majority of his uh, family still resides in New Delhi. And so that is something that we're strongly considering uh, in terms of embracing each other. It's so important, uh, particularly for the next generation. Uh, recently, in fact, last week when we were at dinner, we filmed a, uh, a message uh, sent via social media to uh, his nephew who got married last week, or actually this week, right. and, and congratulating him. So we filmed a video message and sent it over just to make him feel that, hey, we're thinking about you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that is going to be a, an emphasis of, for us and a focus for us to go to India uh, more often than just twice, in, for me, just twice in 33 years. So you're like every uh, typical American family in that it's tough to keep up with, with the family. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was so nice to hear that you got in touch with them for their wedding, but just trying your best to keep in touch. Um, Talk about, TK, your life uh, here, your work, uh, and why you stayed in this country. And have you ever thought about returning permanently to India? Uh, how I got inspired. And your feelings about this country, right. by the way. But when I uh, started working in New Delhi, uh, in the air conditioning field, we had some contracts, servicing contracts with different embassies. We used to go <coughs> service their equipment in uh, uh, High Commissioner's house, the embassy itself. Uh, we used to go and see all those luxury, which was uh, not possible for the middle class man. And I used to always get, you know, very thrilled and can I have stuff like that. And uh, the, that was the one reason I got encouraged to come to America. That it's possible if you make it better, you can have all that. And. Uh, it was uh, just a coincidence. I used to, I was very fond of working it out. I used to go in a park every morning. And there was three, four elderly people used to come there as well. And they were uh, officers from the Central Government of India. They used to watch me, you know. And uh, slowly I started talking to them. We will sit in the park for a little while. And uh, one of the gentlemen asked me that what I do, I explained him that's what I do. He said, well, the trade you have, you are needed in the United States more than here. I said, he had three kids settled here in the United States. He encouraged me and guided me. Uh, that's how, you know. Has the United States lived up to your expectations all those years ago? Certainly, yes. I was so amazed to see things here, grocery stores, houses, and all that. I was really very, very impressed. From the beginning? Yes, right, right from the beginning. Yeah. How old were you when you... I came here when I was 27 years 27, that's okay. Yes. And uh, so right from the beginning, you're in Jacksonville. Yes. You're impressed with it. Did you, were you able to buy a house right away? Or you lived no, in an apartment? No, we, we rented an apartment. Okay. And I remember I used to come back from my eight hours regular work. And uh, I talked to the uh, apartment manager where we were living that she can give me some work. I know the trade. And uh, she started giving me some work orders. Okay, go fix this. I used to do that as well part-time too. 
And where were you working originally, full time? Uh, I started with Pick and Save. Pick and Save? Oh, goodness, yeah, I that. do indeed, yes. And that's where I started. Okay. And you I maintained their stores for stores, them? stores, yes. I used to go all over. I started as a helper, and then I got my own truck. And uh, when I started with them, I didn't know how to drive even. I learned how to drive oh, on their company trucks. That you had never driven in this never drove until you came to the United, United States. States. Yes. So, the, oh my! So then there were a lot of uh, what we consider natural uh, changes and hurdles and accomplishments. These were this is later in life for you a little bit anyway. Twenty seven, twenty eight. So that was very exciting, you know. Yes to uh, work with the people and language was the another barrier, especially here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... Uh, you, did you speak much I, English when you came Yes, uh, I did speak English, but accent was different here. Sometimes it was hard to understand, but uh, I picked it up pretty quick. Well, it certainly struck me that your son <laughs> speaks more Middle American than I do. <laughs> That's hard. So uh, don't let him fool you. He does too when he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you uh, and oh, your uh, your speech is beautiful. So here, so you, but you spoke English. Was that taught in your government schools in India? Uh, or? yes. Okay. English was taught, and. Uh, yeah. Actually, in government school, they used to uh, start teaching English from sixth grade. And uh, I did go to private school for first, second, third standard. So I started learning English from the first grade. What about your wife? Did she speak English when you first met, or did you? Uh, she, because she was already here. And she was in this country for three years before we met. Oh, yeah, she spoke excellent. And uh, as a matter of fact, she spoke better than I did when we met. Right. So, uh, yeah, and we both worked hard. And uh, we now we're very seldom used to go out and eat. We will always bring food home. And uh, that's what, uh, that's how we were able to send these two boys to uh, the school. We were not making you're not engineers or doctors or lawyers, you know, but uh, somehow we've made it. Do you, do you not consider yourself uh, an engineer, though, of all this complicated equipment that you run for a major medical center? Oh, sure. Yes, I at mean, this point, uh, yes. Well, yes. I, I'm very satisfied with what I do, and I enjoy it. So. Uh, and how long have you been with uh, Baptist Medical Center? I've been Center? working for Baptist Medical Center for the last 27 years. And uh, I love it there too. You know, I enjoy it. The working conditions are great. At what point did, I'm assuming you're a homeowner. At this yes, ma'am. At what point did you become a homeowner? At what point did you perhaps, I assume maybe you bought a an automobile at some point, I don't know. Because uh, how were you? How did you get to work before? Right, uh, that's also interesting. Uh, uh, we wanted to buy a vehicle for ourselves. Me and my wife joined me. Actually, I came by myself here in Jacksonville. She was still uh, living in New Jersey. And she came after two months. And uh, my brother-in-law was already here, so I was staying at their place to, and uh, then we got same community same apartment complex i got my apartment and uh, i used to get right from my fellow men they used to drop me off they would pick me up in the house for my apartment so uh, uh, then my wife joined me and we were looking for a car and we found there was uh, somebody selling a car at Hector drive so we borrowed my brother-in-law's car to go and see that car. And uh, Hatcher Drive, what we never heard about, we were new here. And we made it to the place, it was, we were so impressed looking at that car, we wanted it. <laughs> and the gentleman, he said, well, uh, Indian, the negotiation bargaining is in our blood. So I, he wanted $3,000, I 
ट्रैक कर रहा है सर पावर 25 वन रीसे नहीं आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टेक ऑफ 50 बॉक्स एंड आई सेड डोंट सेल इट टू एनीबॉडी एल्स ही सेड आई प्रॉमिस यू यू ब्रिंग द मनी टुमारो एंड कॉल इट्स योर आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टेक एनी अदर ऑफर सो वी वेंट बैक नेक्स्ट डे एंड I didn't know how to drive that time. I had only a restricted permit, so we took our brother-in-law with us. So we got the car, we brought it, and that—that uh, that was good experience. And you were living in the most geographically spread out city in the contiguous United States. Right. Yes. So that was quite uh, an interesting uh, challenge that you met. Right. And, And uh, but you know uh, we got uh, my when we got the car my wife will drop me off at the uh, Union Street and that's where the warehouse was for because I used to meet every morning and take our assignments and go and uh, I remember those days from the traffic light I used to run to the work so I can make it in time. And uh, the evening, somebody will drop me off who's there who I'm working with. So now, uh, do you both have automobiles, or you you can get by on one automobile? We got more than two vehicles now. More than two now. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you're so Americanized. Yes, more than two. she's got her car, and uh, but. Uh, Yes, so we remember those days. You know, uh, and you, one and, car, yeah. And you eventually would buy a home then. Yeah, we bought a house. Uh, I believe two years after that. And uh, is that still your home, or have no? You, no. Uh, that home we sold. Both my boys were born in that house. <laughs> Still, it's in the same area in Mandarin where we live in now. Oh, okay. You're in, in the Mandarin area. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And every now and then, I'll go by there. Oh. And that brings a lot of memories back. But you're still in that area. Still in that yeah. area. Yes. Some of the plants my wife planted still there, and uh, I mean, wherever you live, you get attached to that place, especially when you're old. I visit that home too, and yes. I'll still see the rose bushes right. that uh, <laughs> Mom planted 28 years ago. Uh, finally, when these two were born, and uh, our income was a little better than before, so we decided we needed a bigger place. Uh, after six years, we sold that house. <laughs> What do you embrace the most about the United States, and what do you miss the most about India? Uh, I admire the honesty, hard work here, people, and uh, how supportive uh, they are. Even your neighbors at workplace, nobody will look. Not about you. That's that's one thing I really uh, liked when I started working over here. But uh, what were the other questions? And and what do you miss about uh, your, your home country, India, New Delhi, uh, and beyond? Because you live more than that one place. Well, even if. We didn't have anything growing up, and uh, we rode bicycles, and uh, there was a fun in that. And uh, all this craze is there till you don't have it. Once you get it, when you compare, it's that was better. <laughs> and your age, time, and all that. I I do miss. <laughs> Uh, coming up as a teenager, my friends and the uh, we all family get together. <laughs> yes, we all right. right. I'm, I'm, 
having fun here, but yes. But uh, village, village life, I grew up in part of my life, I grew up in village, I do miss it. Even there, when I go back, I see those old places I've grown up. And uh, sometimes one of the same place I was raised at. So it's possible to visit your friends from your teenage years because right. some I, of them still are in family so homes right. and find and them? I, uh, that's my main passing time when I go back. How long will you stay when you return, uh, typically? For 18, 20 days. And this ends since uh, I know you love your work so much. Right. Um, do you envision a time when you will ever really retire from your profession? Or do you think you will just... So far I'm healthy. I might retire from my full-time job another two, three years or so. But uh, I will never give up. So when I'm healthy, I will be doing something. And uh, I'm not kind of a person sitting at home. No, I won't do that. And, uh, I'll probably uh, be spending a little more time in India than I go. And, uh, Usually I go in the winters, January or February, so that's the time work slows down a little bit. And, uh, but I, I will always keep myself busy doing something. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about uh, your, you clearly have a, a, a love for your family's culture and you work to keep that alive. Um, and obviously you thought some about going back to India. What other thoughts do you have about your own country? I mean, do you ever envision living there? Do you, uh, it, uh, I, in, any thoughts you have in general about what your father said or about uh, your family's uh, home country of India? Yeah, no, I'm certainly proud um, of the heritage and the culture. I'm very appreciative that my parents uh, still maintained uh, the the ethnic names for, for myself and my brother um, as first generation Asian Americans. Was there ever a time when you wish they would not have named you a traditional Indian name? Yeah, there was one time. Really? There was one specific time, that's it, and then I, I got over it pretty Do fast. Do you want to tell about it? Yeah, it was in the first grade uh, at San Jose Episcopal Day School, right down the street. It's a great school. Uh, all the kids are assigned to you know, grade of each other's uh, assignment, and, and you switch your paper with your classmate that's sitting next to you. The teacher used to ask, you know, write your uh, write your name, but also write your uh, initials, uh, including your middle initial. And and uh, <laughs> I don't have a middle name, and so I, I made one up, and uh, it, I was uh, Rahul Kyle Sharma. I put Kyle. So I wouldn't feel left out. Uh, that's why I wish I had an American uh, middle name. My parents did not uh, give myself or my brother a middle name. So that was the one moment. Other than that, I'm extremely proud uh, of, of having the name that I do. Uh, it's a very common name in India. Uh, there are over thousands upon thousands of Rahul Sharmas in India. Uh, Sharma is an adopted surname uh, in the Brahmin caste. The Indian community, particularly those that are of the Hindu faith, still hold very strongly to the caste system um, in terms of social status and social structure. Uh, each uh, classification is significant in meaning and what it represents um, in terms of citizenship in society. So when my father references, you know, we are Brahmin, uh, it uh, connotates a uh, uh, a very uh, respected, uh, faith-based uh, class of people. And so, you know, Sharma is uh, indicative of the Brahmin caste. And so you'll find that a lot of families adopt that name. Sharma is a very common name, uh, particularly in Northern India. Uh, but I'm very, very pleased uh, to be an extension of the Indian culture. Um, while I may not sound like a typical Rahul Sharma, I still hold the, and carry the name proudly. 
And so I have a lot of friends of mine that are of multicultural descent. And in, in essence, we are all of uh, a type of multicultural descent. Um, but the fact that we have traditional names, uh, I think is very important. And it was very important to my mom and dad that they continue that, even starting a new life in a new country. Um, I, I feel the most privileged in terms of exposure, uh, acceptance of other cultures and beliefs. Uh, growing up in a Hindu uh, household, uh, a Hindu philosophical household, um, attending school at an Episcopalian school, continuing in a non-denominational private high school, and now weekly I attend Catholic Mass. You know, I think I've, you know, been exposed to a lot of different uh, religious beliefs, but one lesson I have drawn from all of my experiences is uh, a willingness to accept and respect others. And you probably heard uh, I know that you heard my father reference how much he appreciates being in America because of the support that he's received every step along the way, both personally and professionally. I feel the same way. Um, the support from family, but also uh, from friends and professional colleagues that, uh, you know, as they say, one nation under God. The United States always has this mentality of working together, working hard and working together that I think a lot of other countries aspire to have a similar type of work ethic, and you're seeing that now more than ever on a global landscape of how competitive the world is, and I think the U.S. has set that standard. Did you, when did you end up, I assume you got your uh, U.S. Uh, citizenship, you and your wife. Right. Was, so when did you do that, and was it memorable at all? Yes, it was. I was very excited to become a United States citizen. Uh, that happened in 1986. There was, uh, back then, there was a big ceremony downtown. And uh, you had to dress up appropriately. And, uh, and yes, I was very proud after getting the citizenship. And you took a test in order yes, to do yes, this? Yes, I had to prepare for the test as well. And I remember coming to the theater for well, the first time I came to the library to get the books. This very library? Uh, Mandarin Library. Mandarin Library, of course, that's remember. right. That's right. And yes. uh, there was, I don't remember the uh, books, but uh, I asked to my friends, those uh, already had the citizenship, he said they have seen people do get fatal, you know, the chest. So don't uh -oh. assume everybody is fast. So, you know, I did. Uh, I don't remember the amendments and uh, all that. And, uh, Which means you know more about well, that's, that's back our then, government. Probably that yeah. week I did. <laughs> that week. And uh, so, uh, yes, I remember uh, the counselor asking me for the interview before the uh, ship. He said, uh, just write down a sentence. Do you speak English? I said, yes, I can. So write down a sentence, I would like to become citizen of the United States of America. I said, I had a good handwriting. I can write about that. And I said, I'll write down my friend. You will pass me right away. <laughs> did you did you write why you wanted to become a citizen or you just had to write no, no, you, you, you just that just you wanted have to? to write. That was his so he would know that you can write as well. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was the test and that yes, was yes, what was that written. Was for that. But yeah, that was a good experience. And uh, Rahul was a good little, I think. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to the, do you recall if you were at this room again? Yeah, I was very young, Emily. I, you know, yeah. I, I, I think there's a picture yes. that we have. I, I believe I will have to find it, right. but yeah. Yeah, I was very young, but certainly a proud moment for him, um, you know, and, and even for his family when he informed his parents and my grandparents and his brother and sister that, uh, yeah, I'm going to make it here, you know. And uh, So you have dual citizenship, no, actually. No, you don't. Not, I okay. can. No, uh, I think you can. The Rosius card you can have. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, but I don't have that, and uh, I'm still 
you know, all the United States. So you are, and, yeah. and so if you return to India, you were there as I a visitor. To, yes, I have to acquire the uh, visa for that. Um, we have a few more minutes. Just like to hear your thoughts about uh, living here, being here the rest of your life, and you've already uh, mentioned what you think about the United States, but anything you want to add or anything you'd like to add to this interview? Well, uh, I think that was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life, my career, and no regrets. I, well, now I've been living, I've lived in this country more than what I did in India. So uh, I really enjoy it especially living here in Florida. Uh, weather is very similar to what I came from. Actually, uh, uh, the New Delhi and uh, Jacksonville are of the same latitude. And, uh, we have seasons like here, uh, rainy season, winters, summers. So. Uh, uh, Weather-wise, you know, I didn't feel any different at all. But uh, no, I'm a native of Jackson, and I love it. Been living here for 30 years, the years almost. Plan on living here. Looking forward to the grandkids. Spend time with them, I guess. And uh, these are the main thing, both the boys, that I will never move back to India. I will visit maybe for a little longer time, but I still have my brother and sister, mom, and everybody else. You know. But uh, enjoy it. So your life is Jacksonville. Yes. Right. And, and this, as you say, has been your home for 30? 30 years now. Goodness. Yep. So, and uh, Rahul, what would you like to add to any of that? Anything your father said or any comments you'd like to this interview? Well, I'm just extremely proud of, of my both my dad and my mom, you know, um, setting an example. And uh, they're good role models because they have shown a commitment and a loyalty to this country. And, um, you know, it it really puts it in perspective for my brother and I. You know, you talk about growing up in America. I mean, my brother is the first member of our family to serve in the uh, in the military and, and the armed forces, and, and we're extremely proud of that. Uh, and that's certainly because of an influence and, and a culture growing up in the U.S. Um, the the respect, but also the encouragement to serve, and, and he fulfills that. And, and that's something that's very important to him. Um, Could you talk about his service a little bit? With, uh, sure. Uh, you may have said his branch earlier, how yeah. long he's been in, mm -hmm. and does he intend to make it a career? Yeah. Certainly, yeah. So he, um, he attended the United States Naval Academy uh, prep school uh, initially in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, you know, he did all the research and sought nominations on his own. Like my father and I did not have the understanding or the uh, uh, level of political context to provide him with and he, he did that on his own um, and then after a successful completion of prep school he attended the US Naval Academy in Annapolis um, and you know worked extremely hard along with all the other uh, midshipmen and he graduated from there in uh, 2013 and myself my father mother our entire family attended his uh, graduation ceremony. He received his um, distinction and honor from President Obama that year. And uh, we were very proud, I mean, you know, to be inside, uh, you know, Memorial Stadium with all the other military families. And uh, he's currently uh, serving as a Lieutenant uh, 03, U.S. Naval Officer, Service Warfare Officer in Everett, Washington. Um, he has, uh, served a couple of tours of duty already, um, a deployment uh, in the Mediterranean uh, aboard the USS Iwo Jima, 
Uh, he's currently on the USS Gridley uh, ship uh, right outside of uh, Seattle. And then later this year, he will be moving to uh, Washington, D.C. And, and to fulfill an assignment at the Pentagon. So again, you talk about the decision uh, to come to the U.S. and start a new life and, and and have a family here, that certainly had an impact on, on my brother uh, to uh, pursue a career which is unconventional uh, in the Indian community to do something like that. There are a number of examples now of first generation Asian Americans, Indian Americans doing that. Um, and so my brother, uh, is that's the path that he wanted to take. And so we're, we're extremely proud of the fact that he has done that. That's my takeaway is, you know, the family starting a new life and then enabling the next generation uh, to pursue careers of their own that they're proud of. And so I'm extremely proud of my parents and I'm even more proud of my brother because of what he represents and, and how he goes about serving this country every day. Well, I want to thank you both for an enlightening interview. Uh, certainly charming as well uh, and <laughs> that's because of him <laughs> <laughs> indeed <laughs> indeed and uh, it's been it's been a delightful uh, afternoon uh, learning about you and hearing part of your story thank you both thank so you. much thank for you. being with us thank, thank you very much thank you. enjoyed it